Hey, what's going on everybody? It's Tori and welcome back to another Monday Mailbag. Let's jump into your questions from the past week, starting off with David Dang 82 and he says, not sure if this has been brought up already, but what are your thoughts if we had drafted Kyle Kuzma instead of Caleb Swanigan? I had high hopes for him at first, but seeing as we could have had drafted Kuzma. So honestly, in my opinion, what a lot of people don't realize is fit means a lot for a rookie, especially a rookie who's spent a lot of years in college. They need to be able to come in right away and make an impact and have a good fit that allows them to build that confidence right away and be a solid player right away because if they are a multi-year college player they don't have as many years to sit back and develop as say as Zach Collins does coming into the league so if Kyle Kuzma hadn't been getting minutes the first two years who knows if he'd have the confidence at age 25 or 26 to be able to be a helpful player and if he didn't play well then on his final couple years of his rookie contract who knows if he'd even be in the league after his rookie contract so situation situational fit matters a ton and Kyle Kuzma ended up in the best situation possible for him. He's much better at playing up-tempo basketball, running on the fast break, shooting transition threes, and that's not to say he can't play in the half court, but he's definitely, in my opinion, a better transition player. But not only did he get brought into a team that runs a lot in the Lakers, but it was also a team that was young and still developing young players. It was a year before they got LeBron, so Kyle Kuzma immediately had a role on that team, and while his summer league performance performance was very good in the summer league prior so he might have been able to get a role on just any team who knows if he would have gotten the same opportunity the same shots and therefore the same confidence if he ended up in a different situation you look at a guy like donovan mitchell he ended up in a perfect situation on a team that had a lot of good defenders but just lost his top scorer in gordon hayward and was looking for a guy to replace that scoring i mean look at damian lillard in his rookie year he had a top scoring big man to handle the scoring load and handle the number one scoring role a guy who could also pick and pop which helped dame out on the pick and roll he had a small forward in nicholas batum who was able to take some of the playmaking responsibility out of dame's hands you had a guy like wesley matthews who not only spaced the floor very well for dame but he was also such a good defender that he would take the best guard assignment and dame could be hidden on the worst guard of the opposing team it was just a bunch of players that complemented dame's skill set and it really allowed dame to do what he did best terry stotts was also also instrumental in giving Dame the confidence to be able to perform at the level he did his rookie season and that season catapulted him into the rest of his career and the Damian Lillard we know today. With the way we were the season after Kuzma was drafted who knows if we would have even played him who knows if we'd even be looking at him as a good player. Connor McIntosh says where do you think Dame ranks in terms of point guards in the league? I think one factor in the NBA that is overlooked is durability and I agree with durability being able to be available for every single game is definitely something that matters that people don't really talk about. Another thing that matters that people don't really talk about is leadership, which is why I would have him ahead of Kyrie Irving, even though their stats are pretty similar. I'd also have him ahead of Russell Westbrook, because while Russell stuffs the stat sheet, he does chase rebounds, and he's a guy whose passing and assist numbers are partly due to how much he dominates the ball. And then his scoring, he gets over 20 points per game, but it's not efficient at all. He's very inefficient as a scorer. So for those reasons, I think Dame is the better player. I think Dame is the number two point guard in the league. He's behind Steph Curry, sadly. I wish Steph Curry would just forget how to shoot the basketball. Steph Curry already got paid. He already has his rings. I wish Steph Curry would just all of a sudden become Ricky Rubio from the three-point line, because if that was the case, I don't think Steph Curry would be an NBA player. But sadly, Steph Curry, you have to put him ahead of Dame. What Steph Curry can do is amazing, and I hate to say it, but that's just the truth. I have to be unbiased there. But in my opinion, Damian Lillard is definitely the second best point guard in the NBA. Bed Hiwa or Tewit or something like that, he says... How about negotiating a trade for Josh Richardson? I feel like he would fit well in our rotation and he is a defensive powerhouse and is a good shooter. We could trade Simons, Myers, and a couple first round picks. Now, I'm not sure if I would trade a couple first round picks for Josh Richardson. I'm not even sure if Miami would take that trade, but I definitely would not throw in Simons into that trade because I think he has a lot more value to us as a developmental piece compared to his value to another team, which just sees him as a late first round pick that hasn't played but with Dwayne Wade retiring after this season the Miami Heat struggling with some solid players I do think they might try and blow it up this offseason so who knows if Josh Richardson is available he's young enough where I could see them moving forward with him as a part of their rebuild but he's also old enough where I could see them shipping him off for a couple first round picks they also might not rebuild because they don't have their pick in 2021 no matter what so it's a really weird situation there so it's hard to say 
whether we'd even have a chance at Josh Richardson, but he definitely would be a good fit as a guy that can defend and play either a shooting guard or small forward. Jonas Moore, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering these names, guys, I'm trying my best, but he says, you said if we would make it to the finals, but do you believe in it and how far can we go in the postseason? By the way, love your content here in Germany. Honestly, I think if we're a four or five seed, we can go to the second round. And I believe if we're a two, three, six or seven, we could make it to the Western Conference Finals. The only team I don't think we could beat in the postseason is the Golden State Warriors. But do I believe we'll make it to the Western Conference Finals? I honestly don't. I believe it'll be about a 50-50 toss up whether we make it out of the first round. And that might be being optimistic because right now it looks like we're gonna play OKC in a four or five matchup and they've had our number this season. Cash Carter says, what kind of replacement do you think we should bring in at our small forward and power forward position? Or do you think we should keep Aminu and Maurice Harkless? Honestly, I have no idea what small forwards or power forwards are gonna be available this summer. A lot of really good targets that I wanted at those positions got traded in the past year or so and look to be set in their new destinations. Guys like Otto Porter, guys like Tobias Harris, etc. So without knowing who's really available, it's hard to really answer that question. I do want to upgrade those positions, but I'm not sure if there's really going to be much of an upgrade out there. And if there is, it's probably going to be in free agency and we don't really have the cap space to sign a guy that's an upgrade over either of those guys. So we might be stuck with these guys going forward, but hopefully Olshe can figure something out because that's what he's paid to do. Elijah Haraguchi says, thanks for another great video. What do you think about Charles and Kenny going on the record to say that the Blazers will make the finals and defeat Golden State in the Western Conference Finals? He also says, I'm also really frustrated after that OKC loss, so I'm wondering what it is about that matchup that makes us seem so vulnerable to them is it something that we can fix or properly plan for or should we be crossing our fingers that we don't have to face them in the playoffs no matter what to answer part one of your question charles and kenny those are guys that say stuff for ratings those are guys that like making bold predictions it's weird that they're making it about the Blazers because they've never made a bold prediction like that for the Blazers before. I believe Charles Barkley at the start of the season said they were going to miss the playoffs, but I don't pay attention to really anything those guys say, and I'm not going to start now just because they said something good about the Blazers. As far as part two in your question, I think we really struggle with trapping defenses that are able to effectively guard the pick and roll. Our offense is so pick and roll heavy that when teams take that away and when teams trap Dame so he's not able to create out of it, it can have the effect of completely shutting down our offense. It's the same reason why we struggled with the Pelicans, and it's the same reason why we've struggled with the Oklahoma City Thunder. Now, I think we've handled it a lot better this year than we have in years past, so that's some reason for optimism. I do think some of it is just coincidence late in games. I mean, we lost one in overtime. There was a couple other games that were very, very close that could have swung either way. So I think it's partly fluke and partly the fact that they trap pick and rolls effectively. Dwayne Colvin says, would you replace CJ with Hood at starting shooting guard? This would allow us to shop CJ in the offseason. Rodney would add a lot more length to the position. We could shop CJ in the offseason even if we started him for the rest of the year. I don't understand why we'd have to bench him now. And if anything, that'd probably hurt his trade value, so it'd make more sense to keep starting him. And if we made a lineup change for the reason of trading away our second best player in the offseason, then Damian Lillard would not resign here in 2021. That would be by far a terrible move in part of how Dame would think about it and in part of our competitiveness we got to start cj he's better than rodney hood rodney hood is not a good enough defender to justify starting over cj and he's definitely not a good enough offensive player and his punch off the bench is a good fit that move would just be making a move for the sake of making a move and it doesn't make much sense to me last question that i have time for solar money yeet says do you think if say we got the third seed and the jazz stayed at six that it would be a really bad matchup because of their defense or would a houston matchup be better and honestly, I don't think that a bad matchup for us is a good defensive team in general. I think it's a team that can trap pick and rolls. So it's not really about the level of defense they play. It's about the type of defense they play. The Utah Jazz start Derek Favors and Rudy Gobert. Neither of those guys are really that mobile. So I would not be worried about Utah trapping the pick and roll. I do think we'd have more success against them than a team like OKC or a team like Houston. So anyway, that's all the time I had for now, True Blazer fans. I hope you guys enjoyed. So with all that, I'm out of here. I hope you guys have a good week. Peace out. Go Blazers.